Good morning. We're learning Daf Yomi, uh, chapter Tiruvin, page thirty-eight. The name of the chapter is Bakol Ma'avin, is the third chapter, and we will start from the Mishnah. Mishnah says, a person may have only one legal residence for a partic- for a particular Shabbos. One may therefore not establish an eruv in one location for the first part of the day, and another Eruv in a different location for the remainder of the day. The following question arises when a Yom Tov occurs immediately before or after Shabbos, like this year, right? Rosh Hashanah happens on Shabbos and after Shabbos. Correct. Uh, the successive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov regarded as two separate periods, or they are treated as a single extended period of holiness, in which case only one Eruv is possible for both days. This question is the subject of debate in the following Mishnah. If Yom Tov falls close to Shabbos. So, either immediately before on Friday or immediately after it on Sunday, Person make two eruvs on opposite sides of the of his city. My first eruv is for the following two days is to the east. and the second day to the west. Or he could say my eruv the first day is to the west and the second day to the east. If he wishes to travel beyond the city's tchum on only one of the days, he may make an Eru make he may make one Eru and declare Eru My Eru is for the first day, but for the second day I am like a resident of my town who did not make an Eru. Or he could say, My Eruv is for the second day, but for the first day I'm like the residents of my town who did not make an Eruv. According to Rabbi Lezer, two consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tev are independent of each other. The Tchum established for one day does not affect the Tchum of the other day. Either he makes an Eruv on one side of his city for both days, or or he makes no Eruv at all. Either he makes an Eruv for both days, one one side of his city, or he makes no Eruv at all. The sages hold that consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are regarded as as one continuum, one day, throughout the entire two-day period, a person's tchum cannot be changed from where it was at the onset of the first day. One who wishes to maintain an Eruv for both days is advised by the sages to perform the following procedure to avoid the possibility of Eruv food being lost from one day to the next. Ketzad Yase. Practically, how do we do it? What should he do? <coughs> he should bring it, the food for the Eruv, to the desired location on the eve of the first day. And stay with it until it's dark. And then he should take it and go. On the eve of the second day, he should bring the food back to the same location. Stay with it until dark, and then he may eat it and go. As a result of this procedure, he benefits as far as he is walking. He benefits as far as his walking is concerned, meaning that he can walk the extra 2,000 amas. For the preservation of the Eruv enables him to walk 2,000 amas beyond the location of his Eruv, on the second day as well. And he benefits from his Eruv, the very food of his Eruv, because now he has the opportunity to eat it. 
had he not originally removed the Eruv, it might have been lost on the first day, in which case his permitted walking area would have been restricted on the second day, and he would not have been able to consume the Eruv. The sages continue in page 38a2, Nechal Barishon, Eruv Alorishon. If his Eruv was consumed on the first day, his Eruv is valid for the first day. But his Eruv is not valid for the second day because the second day is independent of the first and requires um, to its, its own Eruv. So you agree with me that the two days are two separate periods of holiness. By the same logic, it ought to be permitted to place two Eruvs a different location for the two days. The Gemara points out an apparent redundancy in the words of the sages in the Mishnah. The Ruach my new. The sages, first of all, remarked that the Eruv must be placed on one side of the city. My new, what does that mean? Lishne Yomim, for both days, the Eruv must be only one side. Lishne Yomim. Then the sages added that he makes an Eruv for both days. My knee, what does this mean? The Ruachar, the Eruv must be one on one side. The Eruv must be on one side of the city for both days. Hainu Kamaita, if so, the second comment is identical to the first. The Gemara gives a different explanation of the first comment of the sages and thereby resolves the redundancy. The, the fact that it's repetitive. This is what the sages said to Rabbi Lezer. Don't you, do you not admit that one may not make an Eruv for one day? Half of the Eruv, half of the day toward the north and half of the day toward the south. Omar Lo and Naval, Rabbi Lezer replied to them, It is true, two separate Eruvs are certainly not valid for the same day. And the sages then concluded their argument, Just as one may not make an Eruv for one day, half of the day toward the south and half of the day toward the north, so too, one may not make an Eruv for two days. One day toward the east and one day toward the west. Accordingly, there is no redundancy in the sages' statements. First, they argue that one may not make two Eruvs for the same day, a ruling with which Abelezer agrees. They then went further and contended that the law pertaining to two consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov is identical to the law for one day. The Gemara gives Abelezer a basis for differentiating between the cases. So Abelezer, Abelezer could respond to the sage's argument as follows. Oh, some Kiddush HaAchas there. In the case of one day, it is a single period of holiness and therefore, only one Eruv is possible. Hochob base Kedushos. However, here, the two consecutive days of, Shab of Shabbos and Yom Tov constitute two separate periods of holiness. Therefore, a person can make two Eruvs at different locations, one for each of the two days. The Gemara cites a Baisa which quotes, an argument used by Rabbi Lezer in support of his position that consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are two independent periods. Omar and Rabbi Lezer, Iatem Moedim, do you not agree, Shim Eruv Beraglo Beyom Rishon, that if he made an Eruv with his presence on the eve of the first day by staying at the desired location until nightfall? and wishes to extend that Eruv for the second day. 
Meorev Veraglo Vimshini. He must make an Eruv with his presence again on the eve of the second day. That is, that is, he must return to the same location on the second evening and stay there until after dark. Or else, he would have no Eruv for the second day. The Eruv made for the first day is ineffective for the second, unless it is renewed. And if his Eruv of food was consumed on the first day, do not agree that he may not leave his cities on the second day relying on the Eruv, since the Eruv was not intact during the second evening, it is invalid for the second day. The sages said to him, it is true, the Eruv of the first day must be renewed for the second day. Ha loi beis kedushus and but surely, then you must agree that consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are two separate periods of holiness. Otherwise, there would be no need to renew the Eruv at the onset of the second day. The Eruv set on the first evening would suffice for the entire two-day period. In the previous discussion, as well as in the Mishnah of Eliezer, demonstrated that the sages agree with him that Shabbos and Yom Tov are two independent periods, and thus are inconsistent with their position in our Mishnah forbidding different Eruvs for each of the two days. The Gemara now resolves this inconsistency in the opinion of the sages. The rabbis, the sages of our Mishnah, are unsure whether the two days are to be considered two separate periods of holiness or a single continuous period. By the way, uh, just on a closed note, that Rosh Hashanah, the Gemara calls it for sure Yem Achad. It's one day. It's, although it's 48 hours, but it's considered one day. The rabbis, the sages of our Mishnah, are unsure whether the two days are to be considered two separate periods of holiness or a single continuous period. So here, they are stringent, prohibiting two Eruvs at different locations for the two days because the two days may constitute a single continuous period. And there, and here, they are stringent, requiring that the Eruv be renewed for the second day, because the two days may be two separate periods of holiness. The sages always take the more stringent position in order to satisfy both possibilities. The Gemara now returns to the Baita and quotes an argument forwarded by the sages in support of the position that Shabbos and Yom Tov constitute one continuous period. Do you not agree? The sages said to Abu Lezer, Do you not agree? That one may not make an Eruv initially on Yom Tov for Shabbos? says uh, also uh, we do Yeruv uh, Tavshilin, so we make from Yom Tov that we're going to be able to cook on uh, Yom Tov for Shabbos, because usually you're allowed to cook on Yom Tov for Yom Tov, for that, for that meal that you're going to eat. But So Rabbi asked, one may not make an Eruv initially, initially to begin with on Yom Tov for Shabbos, which follows it. The Eruv for the Shabbos must be prepared before Yom Tov. So when are we doing Eruv Tavshil? Before Yom Tov. Similarly, it applies to Eruv Tchumin. Not on Yom Tov itself. Why should he do Eruv on Yom Tov itself? Omar Lein, Avol, or Blessed replied to them, it is true. The Eruv, for the Shabbos cannot initially be made on the Yom Tov. The sages conclude their argument, Ah, loy kedusha achasi, but surely then you must agree the two days 
constitute one continuous period of holiness, otherwise there would be no problem in establishing an Eruv for the Shabbos on Yom Tov. But the previous discussion, from the previous discussion, it would seem that Rabbi Lezer agrees with the sages that Shabbos and Yom Tov form a single period of holiness. However, this contradicts his position in our Mishnah permitting two different Eruvs for the two days. The Gemara now resolves this difficulty with Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer could explain, Oh, so Mishu Machon, there an Eruv for the Shabbos may not be made on Yom Tov because it is preparation for the Shabbos, which is prohibited in Yom Tov. In fact, consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are two separate periods. However, an Eruv may not be made on the first day for the second day because of the prohibition of preparation. It says in number 19, in the notes, although it is permitted to make two different Eruvs for two days of the Shabbos and Yom Tov according to Rabbi Lezer, all the necessary preparations and declarations for both Eruvs must be executed before Yom Tov so as to avoid the prohibition of preparation. This means that before the onset of the Yom Tov, the two Eruvs must be placed in their respective locations, and the owner must declare that his area of, of residency for Yom Tov will be at one location, and his area of residency for Shabbos will be at the other location. Even the renewal of an already existing Eruv may constitute a forbidden act of preparation under some circumstances. This is the subject of debate in the Gemara below. The Gemara quotes a Baisa in 38A3 in the right column. It says the Gemara quotes a Baisa which discusses whether an Eruv set at the eve of the first of two consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov is valid for the second day as well. Tanu Rabbon, Eruv Veraglu Bihem Rishon, if he made an Eruv with his presence on the eve of the first day, but st by staying at the desired location until nightfall, and wishes to extend that Eruv for the second day, he must make an Eruv with his presence again on the eve of the second day. Otherwise, he assumes the Tchum of his city on the second day. That's what Me'or of Beraglov is, that he makes an Eruv with his presence. He has to be there. Nechal Eruvim Rishayin. If his Eruv was consumed on the first day, he ate it. En Yitzel Bim Sheni. He may not leave his city, his city's Tchum, relying on the Eruv that he ate. He can't do it on the second day, since the Eruv was not intact during the second evening. Since his Eruv was not intact during the second evening, it is invalid for the second day. Divrei Rabbi. These are the words of Rabbi. Rabbi holds that the two days are two separate periods. And therefore, an Eruv set on the eve of the first day is not valid for the second day unless it is renewed. If it is not renewed, he reverts to the Tichum of his city on the second day. Rabbi Udaim. Rabbi Uda says, Areze Chamar or Chamo. Gamal. This is comparable to a donkey driver who is also a camel driver. Remember we spoke about it that each one is pulling differently. The camel you pull from the front and the donkey you pull from the back. You lead from the back. 
like one leading these two animals who have to divide his attention between them, so, so too this person is simultaneously confined by the limits of the Eruv and the limits of the Tchum of his city. If he made an Eruv with his presence on the first day, by remaining at the desired location until nightfall, in need not make an Eru with his presence on the eve of the second day. If he consumed his Eru, and the first day he ate it, he may nevertheless leave his cities to whom relying on the Eru on the second day. These two Tanoim hold that consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov definitely constitute a single continuous period of holiness. And therefore, the original Eruv is valid for the entire two-day period, even if it was not renewed on the eve of the second day. Rav rules on this question of whether consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov constitute one continuous period of holiness. Amara, Aloho Kedaled, Aloho Kedaled Zekenim Halolu. The law is in accordance with the opinion of these four elders listed below. Who are the four elders? Aliva the Abu Lazar, the Omar Beis Kedushes, Hain, and who follows Rabbi Lezer's opinion that the two days are two separate periods of holiness. And these are the four elders Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yerchon ben Boiko, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yesi, Bar Yehuda Stimo. And some say one of them was Rabbi Lozo. And they omit Rabbi Yesi Bar Yehuda, the anonymous Tana from the list. So Rav stated that Rabbi Shem Gamliel and Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Yechom and Beroika, agree with Rabbi Lezer that consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are considered two separate periods, two separate holiness, two separate days of, of holiness. The Gemara points out that this is inconsistent with the opinion as recorded in the Vaisaba. But we heard the opposite from these two Tanoim. In the Baisa quoted above, they ruled that an Eruv need not be renewed for the second day. Why? Because the two days are one continuous period of holiness. So yet, Rav said that they agree with Rabbi Lezer who holds that the two days are two separate periods. Question mark. Is it one day or two days? The Gemara answers that their opinion were recorded incorrectly in the Bison. Their opinion was recorded incorrectly in the Bison. The Gemara answers that their opinions were recorded incorrectly. Gemara says, A Puch reversed their opinions as recorded in the Baisa. Instead, the Baisa should read that these two rabbis do require the Eruv to be renewed for the second day. Yach Yainu Rabbi. If so, their revised opinion is identical to the opinion of Rabbi, who was quoted earlier in the Vaisa as requiring the Eruv to be renewed for the second day. Since their opinions are identical, why does the Vaisa quoted why did the Vaisa quote them separately? Gmar answers by making an additional correction to the Vaisa. Say that the Baisa should read as follows. 
And so said Rabbi Shem Gamliel, the Bryce records the opinion of Rabbi Shem Gamliel, Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Yechonon ben Beroika, not as a dissenting opinion, but rather a support for the opinion of Rabbi. The Gemara notes that Rav's list of, of elders who rule that consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are two separate periods. Consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are two separate periods is incomplete. And let Rav also includes Rabbi, whose opinion was quoted in the Baita above, the two days are considered separate periods. Rabbi Tinachle Velosavol. Rabbi taught this opinion, but does not agree with it. Velosavol does not agree with it. Rabbi merely noted that according to Rabbi Lezer, his view, according to Rabbi Lezer's view, an Eruv must be renewed on the eve of the second day. The uh, fact that Rabbi mentioned Rabbi Lezer's opinion does not necessarily indicate that he agrees with it. Perhaps the, we can use the same logic and say that the other rabbis of Shin Gamlil and of Yishmol, the son of Rabbi Yechum and Beroika, quoted in the Baisa, also merely taught Rabbi Lezer's opinion, do not agree with it themselves. How does Rabbi, uh, how does Rav know to include them among those who follow the opinion of Rabbi Lezer and to exclude Rabbi? Rav Gemoro Gomerlo. Rav had received a tradition, tradition from his teacher, to the effect that Rabbi Shimon Gamlil and Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Yechon Baruch, agree with Rabbi Lazar's opinion that Rabbi was only quoting it. Gemara notes a contradiction between Rav's ruling above the consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov are separate periods of holiness. In another one of his ruling, Kinoch Nafshid Rav Huna, when Rav Huna passed away, I Rav Chista lememra the Rav and the Rav. Rav Chista entered the study hall to point, to point, to point out the contradiction between two statements of Rav. Miyom Rav Alacha Kedal Zikinim. Did Rav really say that Alacha follows follows the 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 four elders? Valiba the Rabbi Lezer do Amos take Dushisa. who follows Rabbi Lezer's opinion, that the two days are considered two separate periods of holiness. Va'itma. But it was stated, Shabbos v'yom tov, when a Shabbos and yom tov occur on consecutive days, Rav said, an egg laid on the first day is forbidden on the second day. So if you have a chicken, you have a hen, a hen laying eggs, and the egg was laid on Shabbos. The next day is Yom Tov. You're not allowed to eat the egg, to take the egg on Yom Tov, on the second day. So in this case, let's say now this year's Shabbos, uh, Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbos and Sunday, and you have your, your hand laid an egg on Shabbos, you'd have to wait really till Monday to eat the egg. So it says over here. On Shabbos or Yom Tov, one may not eat an egg laid on the on that very day. However, an egg that was laid on the previous day is permitted. Previous day before Shabbos. Now, Rav, who forbids an egg laid on the two, on the first of the two consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov, to be eaten even on the second day, must hold that the two. Uh, the two days constitute a single continuous period of wholeness. This contradicts our uh, assertion above that the two days are separate periods of wholeness. So the fact that it's forbidden, we see that you, there's really two, uh, the two days are one day. 
I'm Rabba. So the Gemara answers that Rav prohibited the egg on the second day, not because the consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov counts as a single period of holiness, but rather for a different reason. What's the different reason? I'm a Rabba, Hosam Mishum Hachon. There, in, the, in Rav's ruling, the egg is forbidden because of preparation, meaning the egg was prepared for use when it was laid on the first day, and it is forbidden to derive benefit from an item of food on Shabbos or Yom Tov that was prepared on an immediately preceding Shabbos or Yom Tov, the Tanya. Apostle says, and it will be on the sixth day, and they shall prepare. Choil mechin le Shabbos, ve choil mechin le Yom Tov, and Yom Tov mechin le Shabbos, and Shabbos mechin le Yom Tov. A regular day can prepare for Shabbos. A regular day can prepare for Yom Tov. But no, Shabbos prepares for a regular day. And Yom Tov or Shabbos mechin le choil. Choil mechin le Shabbos, ve choil mechin le Yom Tov, and Yom Tov mechin le Shabbos. Yom Tov cannot prepare for Shabbos, and Shabbos mechin le Yom Tov. And no Shabbos prepares for a Yom Tov. Habayat challenges Rabbi's explanation that Rav prohibited an egg laid on the first day to be eaten on the second day because of the prohibition of preparation. Amar le Abayat, Ela desnan, but that which we learnt in our Mishnah, Ketzad Oise, what should he do if he wishes to make an Eru for both days? What should he do? Malichu Barishon, he should bring it, he should bring it, the food for the Eru, to the desired location on the eve of the first day. Umach Shichol, and then stay with it until it, it is dark. Venotlo yuvalo, and then he takes it. Venotlo, and then he should take it and go. Basheni marshi cholov on the eve of the second day, he should bring the eru back to the same location. Stay with it until it is dark. Venotlo yuvalo, and then he make it and go. No, when we say preparation, David, it doesn't mean preparation that you are preparing it, cooking it. When we say preparation, it means that it was prepared for you on Yom Tov. What does it mean it was prepared for you on Yom Tov? The egg, the egg was laid on Yom Tov. So, or was laid, was laid on Shabbos. So it was created for you on Shabbos. It was created for you on Yom Tov. That's what it means over here, prepared. Not that that you need to prepare it. Because, like you're saying, first of all, on Yom Tov, you can eat egg, uh, you can cook the egg. So there's no problem. You're allowed to, to cook an egg on Yom Tov. If you want to make an egg salad on Yom Tov, you're allowed to do it. The issue, of it, the issue over here is when it was made. So... If something was made on Yom Tov, or was made on Shabbos, not allowed to. It's like if a, a fruit falls off the tree on Yom Tov, or it falls off the tree on Shabbos. I'm allowed to take it, even though I can eat it right away. There's no preparation needed. But it, the fact that it came down on Shabbos, it was prepared for me. But now, seemingly, I would have, in a regular situation, been able to pick it up. I mean, it's now ready to be used. To be used, so the readiness to be used on Shabbos and Yom Tov is a problem. To make something ready for use on Shabbos and Yom Tov. So, Abaya asked a question. Abaya said to Rava, "Kaitza do I say? How does he do it?" So we said he brings it the first day, wait till it's dark, picks it up, and then he comes again. On the second day, wait till it's dark, uh, eats it, he may eat it and go, and then he has the 2,000 amas to go. The Gemara says, Why? But he's preparing on Yom Tov for the Shabbos. 
when the places the evo on the afternoon of of the first day before nightfall is enabling travel beyond the location of the evo on the second day so meaning he the fact that he comes again on yom tov and does it meaning that on that day he creates the evo he prepares the evo on that day if this is permitted then an egg should be permitted also an egg laid on the first of consecutive days of shabbos and yom tov should also be permitted Amalei Rabba, so Rabba answers that replacing the Eruv does not involve preparation on the day of Yom Tov itself where laying of an egg is preparation. Amalei Rabba, you saw a safe Hayom Kriyin Eruv, you think that the end of the day of Yom Tov is when the Eruv for Shabbos becomes effective? Tchilas Hayom Kriyin, the beginning of the day of the Shabbos is when the Eruv becomes effective. The Shabbos Mechin Atzmo, therefore, in in essence, the Shabbos is preparing for itself. The mere act of replacing the Eruv is not a preparation on Yom Tov. The mere act of replacing the Eruv is not preparation on Yom Tov because it is not effective until the commencement of the Shabbos. However, when an egg is laid, it is immediately ready for eating. It was prepared on Yom Tov for the Shabbos. Rabbi's notion that an Eru becomes effectively only at the onset of the next day is now challenged. El Amato if so, they should be able to make an Eru with a bottle of wine that becomes fit for consumption only at nightfall. We learned in the Mishnah that one cannot make an Eru with wine that is tevel and currently forbidden to consume because it's tevel, even if it will automatically become fit for consumption at nightfall. Let's say he would give myself right before nightfall, so the wine will be okay. This proves that the Eruv takes effect at the end of the first day, when the wine is still forbidden and unfit for an Eruv, and not, as Rabba suggests, at the beginning of the second day. Rabba answers that the Eruv is invalid in that case for a different reason. We require that the Eruv consist of a meal that is fit for consumption while it is still day, and that is not the case here since the wine was prohibited until nightfall. Therefore, even if we consume, therefore, even if we assume that an Eruv takes effect at the onset of the Shabbos, the Eruv discussed here is nevertheless invalid. Rabbi answered that an Eruv must be fit for consumption on the day before it becomes effective is now challenged. Ella had this not, but that which we learned in the Mishnah of Lezo Abulezo says, Yom Tov Asomuch Shabbos. If Yom Tov falls close to the Shabbos, either immediately before it on Friday or immediately after it on Sunday. A person may make two Eruvs, an opposite side, on opposite side of his city, one for each day. The Gemara assumes that the two Eruvs were both placed at the maximum distance of 2,000 Amis from the city. Therefore, the Gemara asks, Haba inan suda rum roje, but we require that the Eru consist of a meal that is fit for consumption while it is still day, Veleka, and that is not the case here, because the Tchum established by the Eru of the first day does not extend to the location of the Eru for the second day. This means that the second Eru is inaccessible to him on the first day. 
thus unfit for his consumption, yet it is valid Eru. Rabbi answers that Rabbi permits the placement of the second Eru only if it is within the Tchum of the first Eru. Me, Sova, the Manachle, do you think that in the case of Abu Lazar, refers to the one Eru? Do you think that in the case of Abu Lazar, refers to one Eru was placed by Sofa Paramalechan at the end of 2000 Amis in this direction? and the other at the end of 2,000 Amis in the other direction. If the two Eruvs were 2,000 Amis from his city, the second, the second Eru would be invalid because it is more than 2,000 Amis from the first Eru and thus inaccessible on the first day. The Gemara says, Loi, Abu Lazar refers to a case in which the Manachle Besef Elef Amulechan one Eru was placed at the end of 1,000 Amis in this direction. And the other at the end of 1,000 Amis in the other direction. Now since the second Eru is within 2,000 Amis of the first one, it is accessible even on the first day and thus it is valid. Rabba established above that preparation is forbidden on Yom Tov for the Shabbos and vice versa. This principle is apparently contradicted by the following ruling. If he made an Eruv with his presence on the eve of the first day, of two consecutive days of Shabbos and Yom Tov by staying at the desired location until nightfall and wishes to extend that Eruv for the second day. He must make an Eruv with his presence again on the eve of the second day. And if he made an Eruv with bread on the eve of the first day and wishes to renew the Eruv for the second day, he must make an Eru with bread again on the eve of the second day. The Gemara says, but if so, again, he's making Yom Tov the Shabbos. He's preparing on Yom Tov for the Shabbos. When he renews the Eru with his presence, he must make a verbal declaration. He has to say that this is for the purpose of Eru. He's not just camping. And this constitutes a forbidden act of preparation. Rabbi, Inuz, Rabbi answers that, that this does not constitute preparation because in fact no declaration is necessary when an Eru is established by means of the, owner, the owner's presence. Amalei, Rabbi answered them, Mi sova de ozir omidi, do you think that he has to go to the desired location and make some declaration for the Eruv to be effective, the Ozil Veshosik Vyosi. All he has to do is go to the desired location and sit there silently until nightfall. Since no declaration is required, one may renew an Eruv on Yom Tov for the Shabbos, even by means of one's presence. For no forbidden act of preparation is involved. The Gemara ascertains whose opinions, whose opinion this follows. Come on, according to whom is it true that no declaration is necessary when renewing an Eruv with one's presence? who said that even ownerless objects require or acquire a residence of their own and therefore may not be removed beyond 2,000 Amis from their location at the beginning of the Shabbos. This is true even though these objects are ownerless 
and no one can make a declaration for them. Similarly, a person may make an Ewu with his own presence even without a declaration. The Gaon also suggests that even the sages who disagree with Rabbi Yehoban concede, agree, that no declaration is necessary when an Ewu is established with the owner presence. You don't have to say a thing. That's what it seems like from this. No declaration is necessary. You may even say that the rabbis, the sages of the Mishnah who disagree with Rabbi Yehoban and hold that a person who was traveling does not establish residency if he was asleep when the Shabbos began, agree that a person who establishes an Eru with his presence does not require a verbal declaration. The rabbis do not disagree with Abiyah Benuri, El Abiyah except in regard to a person who is asleep. Because he is incapable of making a declaration while He's while he sleeps. However, in regard to someone who is awake, if he wanted to speak, is capable of making a declaration. Even though he did not actually make the declaration, it is regarded as if he did make as if he did make the declaration. And the Ewu is valid without an, ex- an express declaration. The outcome of the previous discussion is that the ra- Rabba forbids the renewal of an Ewu if a verbal declaration is involved. But if a declaration is not required, the renewal is permitted. The Gemara now challenges this, this, uh, this distinction between acts of preparation that require a declaration and those that can be ex- executed in silence. If the master, Rabbi, would have heard that which was taught in a bite, it was taught in a bite, a person may not walk to the edge of his field on the Shabbos or Yom Tov. This is going back to the laws of Shabbos, a person should not go to the edge of his field to see what uh, the field requires. To discern what it requires after the Shabbos of Kayotzeb or similarly, Yatil Od Omal Pesach Medina 39A1 says a person may not stroll on the Shabbos or Yom Tov toward the gate of the city before nightfall. Kadeshi Konis Lamechatz Miyad in order to be able to enter the bathhouse immediately upon the termination of the Shabbos and Yom Tov. Had Rabbah heard this bison, Horobi, he would have retracted his assertion about, he would. Uh, his assertion above that the permissibility of the renewal of an Eruv depends on whether the renewal requires a declaration or not. This Baisa prohibits minor acts of preparation even when no speech is involved. Stop here. God willing, we shall continue tomorrow.